Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I am Rosanna Rosado, your Secretary of State. Before we begin, I want to recognize some of the special guests that we have here this morning, uh, starting with Counsel to the Governor, Alfonso David. Let's hold the applause till the end because it's a long list. Sheila Poole, Commissioner of O Office of Family and Children's Services. Superintendent George Beach of the New York State Police. Senator John Brooks. Senator Phil Boyle. Senator Elaine Phillips. Assemblyman Phil Ramos. Assemblyman Anthony DeUrso. Assemblywoman Christine Pellegrino. Assemblyman Andy Rea, Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone, Nassau County Executive Laura Curran, Suffolk Presiding Officer Dwayne Gregory, Legislator Monica Martinez, Susan Berland, and Bill Lindsay, Suffolk District Attorney Tim Sini, Nassau District Attorney Madeline Singas, Suffolk Sheriff Errol Tolan, Islip Town Supervisor Angie Carpenter, Suffolk Police Acting Commissioner Geraldine Hart, Nassau Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder, Jay Korth and Carmen Maquilong from Catholic Charities, Laura Ahern, Executive Director of the Crime Victim Center, Rosmia Sitar from Strong Youth Incorporated, Rich Losner, Brentwood Superintendent, Howard Koenig, Central ISIP Superintendent, Jennifer Hernandez, Empowerment Collaborative of Long Island, Magali Roman, EOC, Tracy Edwards, President of the NAACP, Pilar Delgado, Director of Adelante, Marvin Smith of the NAACP Town of Islip, Teresa Regante of United Way, and all elected officials and community leaders, thank you for being here this morning. Now you can applaud. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for coming together today to address the threat of gangs and gang violence here on Long Island. Today is, for many of us in attendance, a day close to our hearts as it was just a year ago that the street gang MS-13 cut short the lives of four young men here on Long Island. On the one year anniversary of their death, I know we all still feel the shock and pain of that loss. We are joined here together, however, to ensure that no one else has to go through what Justin Yivicura, Jorge Tigre, Michael Lopez Panega, and Jefferson Villalobos and their families went through. This morning, we will hear first from Governor Andrew Cuomo. We will then hear from Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone, Nassau County Executive Laura Curran, Assemblyman Phil Ramos will then speak, and then Senator Boyle will speak. We will then join the governor for the bill signing. This morning, I have the pleasure of introducing a champion for all New Yorkers. We are lucky to be working for him in this time, in these interesting times for this country, Governor Andrew Cuomo. He understands the challenges facing New Yorkers and is working with local communities to protect and empower all New Yorkers. Please join me in welcoming the 56th Governor of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you, Did I do it well? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let's give a round of applause to our great Secretary of State, Rosanna Rosado. She's very direct of the Secretary of State. Now you can applaud. Do not applaud. She does that with me. Sign now. Don't sign. She is great. It's a pleasure to be back on Long Island. It's a pleasure to be in Brentwood. It's a pleasure to be with County Executive Steve Ballone and County Executive Laura Curran. It's, a, it's especially a pleasure to be with them when the sun is shining. I'm normally with them in a snowstorm or a rainstorm or some mother nature kind of evil concoction. Uh, but they are really uh, outstanding public officials, each uh, in their own right, but even more powerful together. You know, for many years, Long Island ran as Nassau separate from Suffolk, and nobody really understood that it's one island and it either works or it doesn't work together. Uh, and these two are great partners, and the progress we're making on Long Island uh, between the water projects and the Long Island Railroad and all we have going on and the Grumman Plume and the environment, 
Uh, none of it would have happened without Steve Ballone and Laura Curran. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> My colleagues from Albany, we have uh, Senator Phil uh, Boyle with us and Assemblyman Phil Ramos, the two Phils. They worked very hard on this legislation. Uh, I'm going to sign it. I'm going to take the credit for it because, you know, when something goes bad, I get all the blame, so I think it's only fair when it's good news. Uh, but they worked very, very hard. It wouldn't have happened without them, and let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> all the administration officials who are here, all the elected officials, uh, thank you all. All the community leaders who are, are dealing with what is really uh, an extraordinarily difficult problem gang violence, specifically MS-13. Uh, you know, in this age where everything has a simple answer, right? Uh, you can Google anything and there's a one-line answer for anything. We tend to oversimplify problems at times. Uh, and uh, sometimes problems are more complex and more nuanced than we give them credit for. We have a President of the United States who can, now can do foreign policy in a tweet, right? Uh, sometimes it's more nuanced. Uh, and MS-13 and gang violence is one of those issues that is more complicated and more nuanced. A uh, big part of the answer is, no doubt, law enforcement. We lost four young lives. These are criminal acts. These were horrendous, uh, evil, motivated uh, assassinations. And as a society, our number one rule is zero tolerance for that kind of behavior, that kind of activity. Uh, and our police have been doing extraordinary work. They're working together in a way they've never worked before. Uh, I want to point out District Attorney Singus and District Attorney Sini, who have done a great job, and Sheriff Toulon and Sheriff Flood. Let's give them a round of applause. We have our State Police Superintendent here, Superintendent Beach. I'd like to thank him for his work. We're also working with our federal partners, the FBI, in one coordinated effort, and government coordination uh, doesn't have to be an oxymoron, and this effort actually shows that everyone can come together and focus, and let's thank the FBI and our federal partners. Uh, so that, that piece is working well. And we're even strengthening that piece in this budget that we just passed. We have more resources for policing and community action teams, and I'm, pr I'm proud of that because they need support. Uh, but that is not the total answer here. It's the simple answer, lock them up, lock them up. Mass incarceration is not the answer to societal problems. We lock up more people in this country than any civilized nation on the globe, all right? Uh, it's very expensive. It is destructive. Uh, it puts young people in a very difficult position trying to reenter society once they come out of prison. So that is, in many ways, in my mind, the last resort. When you have to lock up a young person, in many ways it says, we failed. We failed because the real issue is preventing the problem in the first place. And with MS-13, it is complicated. Uh, yes, you have real criminal elements that are not just in New York, it's nationwide, starts in Central America, came first to Los Angeles. Uh, but these are really desperate, desperate, uh, evil people who the police have their hands full with. But a full solution says, let's stop the young people from getting caught in the gang pipeline to begin with, rather than just treating them 
as criminals once uh, the gang takes over. How do we get ahead of the problem and prevent it in the beginning? Because that is really the solution. Let's not treat the disease, let's prevent the disease. And with MS-13, you have 120,000 children who came to this country uh, seeking asylum. They fled from Central America. Uh, 8,600 came to Long Island, many of them unaccompanied, no support services, no language, no help, and they were easy prey for the gangs. You have no family, you have no job, you have no alternative, and now the gang spots them at a very young age and literally attacks them and recruits them. We have to attack that end of the problem also. We have to stop the recruitment pipeline. Many of these children are prey. Stop the wolves from attacking the prey. Protect the prey. Well, how do you do that? Understand that these are young, vulnerable people and they need help. And let's get them the help and the support they need so they don't fall victim to the gangs in the first place. And that is a dimension of the problem that I think in many ways we have not invested enough in. Because locking them up at the end of the pipeline, let's get to the front of the pipeline and stop young people from entering the gangs in the first place so we can save the pain and the misery and the incarceration that comes out the other end. And that's what today is all about. And the piece of legislation that we're going to sign today does both. It has a police enforcement piece and it gives law enforcement the tools they need because they're doing a very difficult job. But it also says, let's do preventive work and reach out to young people earlier on so they never fall into the gang web to begin with. What does that mean? That means social and educational services. That means a job for a young person that pays with a training voucher. So while they have a job and they're earning a salary, they can also be getting the training they need. That means after school programs. So the young person in an at-risk area doesn't wind up on the street at 3 o'clock. There are after-school programs where they can learn and they can be safe and they can be protected from these gangs. It means language support services so they're better integrated into the community sooner. It means mental health services so if they have an issue, we're dealing with it. It means medical services. It means putting services into those schools so the schools can really provide comprehensive services because the school is not just about teaching. They will see the problem. Right now, we don't have those support services in the school. We don't have those support services in the community. And we have to provide them. So do both ends of the pipeline. And it's a better investment to stop it from happening in the first time. This legislation funds exactly that. Social and education programs to engage at-risk youth, to cut off the recruiting by gangs, after-school programs in at-risk areas, job training, $5 million to provide a private sector job and the training that goes along with it, preventive education on gangs, so young people know when they're approached, how to handle it, and what to do, so they're not surprised, they're not intimidated, they're educated before, and they know where to go for help, medical treatment, health support services, anti-gun programs, snug programs in the community, which are very helpful, and funds to actually do this on a school-based and a community-based approach. Uh, this, my friends, is an intelligent, balanced approach. Treat the problem, prevent the problem. 
And that's what we're talking about today. It is a total of about $20 million in state funding, uh, which is a significant investment, especially in this budget, because this was a very tight budget, hard budget. We started with a $4 billion deficit. Uh, it was very hard to make ends meet, so $20 million was a large sum of money. Uh, but when you think about the cost of locking up young people, it cost us about $40,000 per year to keep a person in a jail cell. Just think about that, $40,000. Uh, and then once the person comes out of jail, trying to get them resituated in society in a productive way with a record is very, very difficult. Uh, so I don't consider this $20 million as much an expenditure. I consider it an investment in preventing young people from falling into the same trap. Uh, all I have to do is sign the bill, and it will become law. But first, we have to hear from some very important people who are a big part of the effort. The county executives, uh, this is a major undertaking for them. Uh, Suffolk County is dealing with the brunt of it, no doubt, but it also extends to Nassau County, and the outreach we're talking about today is island-wide. It's Suffolk, and it is also Nassau County, because MS-13 is spreading. It's like a web that keeps spreading. So we need a bi-county, Long Island-wide approach. Uh, and then we'll hear from uh, the two Phils, uh, Assemblyman Phil Ramos and Senator Phil Boyle, uh, who fought like Trojans to get this funding in the budget. Uh, and again, I want to thank them for their good work. Uh, and with that, let me introduce the great county executive of Suffolk County, Steve Ballone. <laughs> Thank you very much, Governor. It's uh, never easy to follow the governor, uh, but uh, I will tell you that I am ecstatic that he is here uh, today, not just because it's not snowing, uh, but that he's, he's here today doing what, what he has always done in his time in public life, and that is lead, um, show the way uh, and the direction that we need to go in. And what the governor just talked about, is exactly the approach that we need to take. It's not one thing. It is not just traditional law enforcement. It is a comprehensive approach to attack this scourge, this problem. And uh, once again, Governor, you are leading the way. Thank you for, for what you've done here. To Assemblyman Ramos and Senator Boyle, thank you for your, your leadership on, on these issues. And, you know, the community coming together, of course, we're here in the town of Islip and uh, Supervisor Angie Carpenter working closely with, with her and the community uh, here. Um, the governor mentioned the, the collaboration. You know, when, you know, when this first uh, rose up uh, as an issue and, and really shook the community, it was, uh, here in Brentwood with the, the murders of two beautiful young women, uh, Kayla Cuevas and Nisa Mickens, and it was just a, a shock to the, to the community. And law enforcement, um, law enforcement stepped up in, in the form of our police commissioner, former police commissioner Tim Sini, uh, who did a <laughs> tremendous job, our chief of department, Stu Cameron, who the governor mentioned, the FBI, and our acting commissioner, uh, it was her third day on the job today, Governor. Uh, Jerry Hart uh, is the former head of the FBI office for Long Island, worked closely with the Suffolk County Police Department and all of our law enforcement partners. But of course, when that happened, um, the governor, as he always does, was on the phone right away. Um, you know, even though he's dealing with all these issues across the state, he saw what this was and said, um, what can we do? We're here to help. And he immediately brought uh, resources to bear. Uh, the New York State Police, who did a tremendous job, and were here uh, assisting us all along the way. And then, of course, a year ago, 
the four murders of uh, these wonderful boys. Uh, and we have in our, our hearts and prayers their family members, their loved ones, their friends still today, and it still shocks us. Justin Levacura, Jorge Tigre, Michael Lopez Benea, and Jefferson Villalobos. These four beautiful boys who had a great future ahead of them, and they were murdered by this brutal, vicious uh, gang. And I do have to say thank you to our, our school uh, superintendents, Howard Koenig and, and uh, Richard Loeschner, uh, for the schools uh, are such a, a focus and, and bear the burdens in so many ways of, of this issue. And, and finally, let me just also thank my partners in the legislature, Dwayne Gregory, our presiding officer, and, and um, the representative for this district, uh, Monica Martinez, our legislator, the head of our public safety committee. The only way to attack this problem, as the governor said, is a comprehensive approach. Traditional law enforcement alone won't do it. You have to undermine the ability of this brutal, vicious gang to recruit. And what the governor has put together here, the program he has put together, the, the array of, of services for these vulnerable children, that is exactly what is needed to undermine MS-13, this criminal organization. Understand that these kids are being targeted. As a parent of three children in school, it is unimaginable to me that there are kids sitting at a desk who are being targeted for recruitment into a gang. Rather than thinking about their studies and their work, they're being targeted into a gang. We have to target those kids, and what the governor is doing here, we are targeting those vulnerable children, but with a, a community of support around them that will make them less vulnerable to this criminal organization. And Governor, on behalf of this entire community, my thanks to you for your leadership and what you're doing here. God bless you. Thank you very much. And it's a great pleasure. Our partners in Nassau County, our partners in law enforcement who the governor introduced, uh, this is a team effort and uh, we've had tremendous partnerships with Nassau County and I'm grateful for that for our county executive, Laura Curran. Thank you very much, County Executive. Um, I also want to acknowledge we have, uh, we have some people from Nassau here as well. We have our District Attorney, Madeline Singus, <laughs> who really understands the importance of grit and compassion, of enforcement and prevention. Um, she really gets it. She lives it every day. We have our Police Commissioner, Patrick Ryder. who is also an incredible partner and gets that same dynamic. And we have Sheriff Vera Flood. And I see we've also got Supervisor Saladino here as well. So we all know that the most important function of government is public safety. Because if we're not safe, nothing else matters. Everything else is gravy. On Long Island, at all levels of government, we will not rest until we have eradicated the threat of MS-13. We're lucky to have leadership in Albany that not only understands that, but backs it up with tools and resources for enforcement, of course, but also for prevention and for education. We're very lucky to have Governor Cuomo at the helm and to have senators like Phil Boyle and assembly members like Phil Ramos who understand this and are actually putting forth this legislation. Without further ado, I would like to introduce one of the co-sponsors of the legislation, Assembly Member Ramos. Thank you. County Executive, I would uh, like to thank you, Governor Cuomo, uh, for your leadership and your commitment in helping keep Long Island and New York safe and protect us from uh, what we have been experiencing for the past several years. Uh, governor, you, the governor is no stranger to this community. In fact, I think in the history of this state, I don't think any governor has visited Brentwood Central Rise Up as many times as you have. Thank you. Thank you for that acknowledgement and for, for your attention on the issues that we are going through. 
The strategy that you are signing into law today is exactly the approach that we need to take on the threat of MS-13. MS Since that threat emerged on Long Island, I have been laser focused on protecting our communities and putting an end to the gang violence. And in that effort, we have had a partner in Governor Cuomo every step of the way. When we looked last year, what, when this issue was really at its worst, um, working with Governor Cuomo, the amount of funds that we were able to get to be able to address this issue. You know, he immediately responded with helping the Suffolk County Police Department to, with, with staffing, uh, helping by bringing the state troopers, and bringing things up to par, because we were underfunded uh, when it comes to the security in our community, and um, uh, understaffed, and that brought us up to a certain level. But the governor understands that we can't just arrest our way out of this situation. And that it comes to a point with law enforcement where you have diminishing returns. If you beef up the police uh, to a certain level, to an adequate level, and then next year you beef it up, you double the amount of police, it's not gonna reduce gang violence by 50%. What we need is adequate coverage, and then we have to deal with the causes uh, and the prevention of gang violence. And in last year's budget, uh, working with the governor, we were able to bring 300,000 to bring Strong Long Island, a gang prevention program, into our schools here, thanks to the good work that the governor did in the budget. <laughs> now, in working with him, it, it really it's refreshing to be able to work with somebody who, who gets it. Uh, too often, what we have is elected officials come to the mic and just throw red meat about getting vengeance against uh, gang members, and this is, we need more police, and throw them in jail, and dispose of human beings, and that's all they're talking about, red meat, as if that is the magic bullet that's gonna solve this. Governor Cuomo understands that this is a complex issue. There's no one cause, there's no one solution. We have to attack this from a, a very comprehensive approach. Now, you know, we have young people coming to our uh, schools here, as the governor said, um, who are victims. Now think about it. These young people come here having passed many times, having crossed four, five different borders, walked through deserts, separated from their parents, uh, gone, feared for their lives, facing robbery, rape, all sorts of issues. They achieve their dream and come here, all is not well. We have a class of young people and older people who are dealing with PTSD that is not being dealt with. And that's what creates a lot of these societal issues that we are having in our community. And thanks to the good work with the governor last year, we were able to provide $500,000 to, our, to Brentwood and Central Isop school districts to beef up those support services and social workers and guidance counselors and, and after school programs, all the things that we need to make our children complete to help that segment of our community. That, that, and that is prevention. That, that goes toward prevention. That prevents victims, that prevents uh, potential gang members. In addition, we were able to get $1 million for non-ticket plate reader cameras throughout this community here. If a crime happens anywhere, the police are able to tell what vehicles left that neighborhood and get a cold hit that they can follow up on, something they didn't previously ha have. And this year, uh, working with the governor, we realized that we've brought programs, we've brought law enforcement, but few people are bringing resources for victims. Few people are talking about the actual victims here who are afraid to come forward, who, who the police need their cooperation. Uh, and this year we were able to get, through work with the governor, 300,000 in victim assistance funding to Make the Road New York, an organization that immigrants uh, uh, trust and will come forward and work and get the assistance that they need. I come from an immigrant family myself, and I know firsthand the challenges facing young immigrants. But make no mistake about it, regardless of how people try and spin this, this is not an immigrant issue. The gang issue, first off, MS-13 was born in the United States. It's a problem that we have to deal with. It is a community issue. It's not an immigration issue. We had a president come here and try and use what we're going through as a pretense just to deport the uh, people and separate families. We can't allow this issue to be hijacked for politics, and that's why it's refreshing to have the governor apply, <laughs> apply 
the resources where they are needed. Governor Cuomo understands that. He is listening to the needs and concerns of this community and taking action to protect our young people and our students from all families on across Long Island. Today is setting a national example in addressing gang violence. So I want to thank him for his leadership and look forward to the continuing work with him to deliver for Long Island. Thank you so much for the bottom of my heart, <laughs> Governor. Please join me in welcoming my partner in the Senate who was instrumental in working and, and uh, making sure that these priorities are taken care of in the budget, Senator Boyle, please. Phil Boyle. Put your hands together. Thank you, thank you Assemblyman, and uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my colleagues, Senator Elaine Phillips and Senator John Brooks. Thank you. Uh, It's a pleasure to be here representing uh, Senator Flanagan, and I'd like to say today we're standing up to MS-13 and trying to protect our children. Uh, this violent group has uh, taken far too many innocent lives and spread fear through our community. However, today we're here on a historic occasion to support legislation which will change all that. As was said, I want to thank our law enforcement officials uh, from both counties. Uh, they do a tremendous job in fighting MS-13, but as was said, it takes a multi faceted approach, and that includes educational programs, job training, and social programs as well, to help these kids fight the temptation and the bullying that are trying to bring them into MS-13. And that's why we're here today. Uh, Governor Cuomo was correct. Uh, Phil Ramos and I did most of the work. However, <laughs> it would not have happened without his leadership. I want to thank him for that, and I want to point out in closing that um, a lot of times you see politicians address issues, they'll come in, do a bill signing, and leave and you never see them again. Well, Governor Cuomo, thank you. You have been back to Brentwood and Long Island repeatedly. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for protecting our children. And thank you for fighting MS-13. So please join me in welcoming the Governor Cuomo, Governor Cuomo to come back and sign the legislation. Thank <laughs> you. 